fixed firm pose, also known as reclining diamond, also known in some other styles of yoga as reclining hero with the lovely assist of senior Barkin teacher Elena. We're gonna feature this posture today with an extra added bonus half tortoise because fixed firm would be too short of a video. So make sure you stay tuned to the very end to get both postures in. Very important in the Vikram world, Barkin world, and the hot yoga world. Now this is the full expression. You might not be able to get into the full expression because maybe your hips are tight, maybe you have a knee issue, maybe it's the ankles, you feel it in your ankles, you feel it in your knees. Usually the culprit is the hips. And we're gonna talk about that, but we're gonna break it down step by step from beginning modification all the way to the full expression. So pardon the interruption, here we are back in my YouTube studio at my house. I wanted to explain the Sanskrit to you because I, I mentioned before in some of my videos, Bikram and I think it was more Vishnu Ghosh was notorious for not properly translating the Sanskrit. So in this pose, it's fixed firm or Sukta Vajrasana. Sukta Vajrasana does not mean fixed firm. I think when you're sitting in this position, when you're sitting in a position, that's why they refer to it as firm position and then you're fixed in it, who knows? But Sukta is reclining and Vajra is the diamond can also be the thunderbolt, can also be lightning, but in this case, it's reclining diamond pose, Sukta Vajrasana. Well, whatever it is, I wanted you to understand the exact Sanskrit translation. Before we continue on, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Hit the like button anytime you're enjoying this video. Any comments that you have, any frustrations about this post, put them down below in the comments. I get to all the comments. So hit the like and subscribe button right now. So we are at Prana Hot Yoga in Fort Lauderdale. That's where I'm teaching if you're in town on Mondays and Wednesdays and Fridays at 10 a.m. is the Barkin Yoga Hot Yoga class and the Hot Vinyasa class. Monday and Wednesday I teach, Friday Elena teaches. A lot of times if people have a knee issue, let's say Elena's right knee or her right ankle is an issue. Sometimes in inaccurately, they stick their legs straight out in front and then they bring their elbows down and they go down into the pose. And they think, okay, I can do this now. I can do the posture and I bypass my problem with the knee. Let me tell you why this is the worst thing you can do. Welcome back to my home. I wanted to explain why in this particular pose in fixed firm, why the last thing you want to do, if you do have a knee issue, usually it's the hip, but if it's the knee that's bothering you or an ankle problem, the last thing you want to do is extend that leg out. And I'll tell you why. The reason why Bishnu goes created this style of yoga in the first place was to use yogic asana to heal the body, not to use yogic asana to perform these amazing yogic poses, especially in the West, we are a performance oriented society. So we get into the whole performance of the thing. That's why a lot of people who have limited range of motion or beginners are very stiff. They're trying to get into that position that people in the front row who have a lot more range of motion or a lot more experience, and they're just trying to force it because they're trying to perform well. The whole concept of hot yoga, it's about the body. We want to use the postures to heal the body. So if you're bringing your leg straight out, for example, in this position and fixed firm, you're bypassing the benefit of healing the body through the pose. So when we go back to the studio and you'll see with me and Elena, the whole idea is to release the hip flexor. So we need to find a modification. We definitely want to irritate your knee by any means or your ankle. We want to find a position that's not going to irritate the knee, but it's going to help to heal and open up the hip flexor because that's really where the culprit is. So let's go over the beginning modifications first. A lot of times if somebody's not able to do the pose, they just don't want to do it. And I'll say, come forward and bring your hands in front of you, lift your hips up, and I'll ask them, can you do that? And a lot of times, sometimes they get belligerent. Yes, I can do that. Great, because now you're doing the pose. Your hands are gonna take the pressure off your knees. Now what Elena is gonna do is she's gonna walk her way back just a little bit, maybe stop there. Maybe this is as far as you can go. Now she's gonna bring your hands to the side of her body, come back a little bit more. Usually you're not able to drop your hips down because the hips are tight. Once again, it's not the knees and the ankles, it's the hips, but the hands are now taking the pressure off of your hips. You're gonna stay here, breathe, and maybe this is too far, come up just a little bit, and stay there. You don't want to go to the point where you're feeling any irritation. You want to go to the point that you can maintain, hold that position, take a longer exhaling breath, and now you can soften the connective tissue, soften the hip flexors, because that's the real culprit. Modification number two, you can sit on a block. Now some Bikram studios won't let you sit on a block. They probably don't even have a block in their studio. Some of the more progressive ones do. If you can sit on a block, actually you can turn the block up high first and sit that way. And if you're going to sit on a block, just sit there. Maybe you can take the block to the horizontal position. And now when you're sitting on the block, you're not going to be able to go back. Try to go back a little bit, Elena. That would, don't do this. Let's put a red X across Elena's body. Come back up. 
She's just gonna sit on the block and once again, take long exhaling breaths to soften the connective tissue and it's gonna be miraculous in how it's gonna help to heal those hips. And when the hips soften, when the hips open up, then you're gonna be able to go down to the full expression or at least you won't have to use the block anymore and you can go a little bit further. I had the privilege and the honor of working with every single professional sports team in South Florida, the Miami Heat, the Florida Marlins. Now they're the Miami Marlins. Back when I worked with them, they were the Florida Marlins, the Florida Panthers, the hockey team, and the Miami Dolphins twice, two different time periods, 1997, 98 with Dan Marino, and then in 2006 with Jason Taylor and Zach Thomas and Terry Kirby. So in 1997, I was working with Terry Kirby and he was a running back. And I actually saw the play on television. He was going for a touchdown and his body went this way and his knee went that way and it was just like oh my god it was just horrible but he came back afterwards after his surgery he came back to the yoga class to help heal his body and he did the modifications to open up his hips in the hot room and it was a remarkable recovery Dan Marino same thing when Dan Marino came to my class he was coming off of Achilles tendon surgery just like Aaron Rodgers did recently and he said that the hot yoga class was more valuable to him than all the physical therapy put together. Now, I'm not trashing physical therapy. I'm, what I'm saying is the reason why Bishnu Ghosh created this yoga in the first place is to heal the body. Not so we can do the perfect pose, but again, it's not so you can do the perfect position and the pose, is that your body is now open, strong, flexible enough to have that range of motion to eventually go into that pose. Once again, talking about Terry Kirby, which I just talked to you about, when he came off his knee injury, hit the front part of his knees were in the shoe. So I had him take a towel and kneel on the towel. And then I took the pressure off the front part of the knees and that's another modification. That's a rare one. I don't really give that modification too much, but that's definitely something you can do if the front of your knees are an issue. Okay, no more modifications. Now your hips are opened and you're ready to start going down to the pose. Here it is step by step on how you wanna do it. And you don't have to necessarily be able to sit all the way to the ground. You still can go back and your hips may be a little bit above the floor, that's okay. You're gonna grab your feet. The first thing you're gonna do is not lean back with your hands. Do that, put your hands all the way back. You don't wanna do that. You wanna grab your feet, grab your heels, touch your right elbow first and hold here. That's the first step. Then the left elbow, hold here. That's the next step. Now it's okay to open these just a little bit especially if your hips are tight, not at the advanced level, especially if your hips are tight. We'll talk about that in a second, how far you can open your knees, but stay right here. Now, a lot of times people will say, the is gonna bring your head back just a little bit. Let's say you're like, oh, you're stuck here. I can only go down to my elbows. A lot of times this takes a lot more pressure because the next step is the head. So if Elena were to touch your head on the ground, just exhale as you go, because you've got to let go of the breath. Don't hold on to the breath, because you'll hold on to your tension. By touching the head on the ground, that takes a little bit more pressure off. It's better than, come back up again, than being here. So if you have a little bit more in you, on the exhaling breath, touch the head to the mat. That's the next step. And now once your head touches, now the shoulders touches, the shoulders touch, your chin comes down toward your chest. And then last but not least, the elbows come behind your head. Grab each elbow behind you. Bikram would say grab your elbows each other, which doesn't make any sense. And you can also now take your elbows out a little bit more. Bring your elbows out a little bit more. Just get a little extra stretch in the shoulders. The knees come together. And then the final expression, this is really important. The final expression pretty much in every pose is complete relaxation. No tension in the face, no tension in the body. If you can completely relax in this position, then you've mastered the pose. Now your lower back's gonna naturally arch. I don't want you to try to get that lower back down to the ground, and I don't want you to over arch the lower back. Just relax, breathe out, stay in the position. Let it happen naturally. It's almost impossible to get that lower back on the ground. Don't worry about it, that's not the goal. Knees together, elbows touching, relaxed face, complete surrender. Now sometimes it's encouraged to bring your knees apart, then you can go back further. So I'm gonna have Leanna bring your knees way, way out, way, way out, way, way out. If you bring your legs even more than that, too far out to the side, what you've done is bypassed the stretch of the hip flexors. And now you've gotten into the whole performance thing of the pose again. We, it's not about the pose, it's not about the performance of the pose, it's about addressing the issue, which is the hip flexors. So if you're gonna separate your knees and it's okay to do that, no further out than your hips. So knees, can go further out, but no further out than the hips because now you're still working the hip flexors. Eventually the knees come together to the full position. Now how do we come out of it? The same way we went down, she's gonna grab her feet, push up on her elbows, 
And now she goes out of the pose. If you're in the Brooklyn world, you're going to turn around on Shavasana. The Barkin world, you're going to do a downward dog. Do a downward dog, Elena. She's dying because she's doing this posture for so long. This is going to stretch out those legs, get the circulation back into the legs, counteract that compression that we had in the pose. Welcome back to my home. We are going to do one more posture. Arta Kormasana, or half tortoise. It was named after the second incarnation of Vishnu. Vishnu's incarnations, he came down, he descended, that's what an avatar is, every time there was this significant life force evolution on the planet. So the fish crawls out of the water and becomes the cold-blooded reptile, the cold-blooded reptile becomes the warm mammal, and so on, so on, so on. So the second incarnation of Vishnu was Korma, the tortoise, and half tortoise was named after this incarnation. So let's head back to the studio and show you our bonus video of half tortoise, Arda half, Korma tortoise, asana pose, Arda Kormasana. And here's our added extra traction pose, the half tortoise, Arda Kormasana. Hips on the heels, little fingers touching not the wrist, forehead touching not the nose, lower back. If you're a teacher, this is a really great assist. You can just press here. As you press here on the lower back, you can take a lot of pressure off. Students are gonna love you for that. Here's a great modification for half tortoise, especially if you have a knee issue. Once again, it's the hips mostly. You can take a towel, roll it up. I've rolled it up. I'm gonna put it underneath here, behind her knees. Now when she sits back on her heels, as a cushion, that's what the discs do for the back. It's like a disc, it's a cushion. It takes the pressure off the knees, arms overhead, and down she goes. And it's a really great modification to use. Take a towel, roll it up underneath your knees. And now a lot of times people need another modification. So arms overhead. Let's say the lanes are really tight. Usually it's more so men than women. Down she goes and her hips come way off the heels because her knees are or maybe an issue or her hips are probably tight. And her forehead's touching the ground, little fingers touching because they say touch your forehead to the ground, but your hips have to come up because you've got an issue here. You're better off lifting your head way off the ground and getting your hips on the heels. So you're better off with your hips on the heels than head on the ground. Let's go back, if she brings your head on the ground, her hips come way up, there's no stretch in the lower back, there's no stretch on the spine. She's just, oh, I'm doing the pose again, bypassing the lower back, which is really where we're intending to stretch. So instead, she brings her head way up, gets her hips back on the heels, and eventually the forehead touches down. So once again, forehead touching not the nose, little fingers touching not the wrist, hips on the heels. Remember if you're a teacher, really good assist. Just put a nice little pressure here. And now the full expression, actually let's have Elena come back up for a second. When she goes down to the pose, hold the core because you don't want your hips to come off the heels the whole time. So arms overhead, this is now if you're a little more advanced. And down she goes, the hips stay on the heels. She maintains her core. The forehead touches, maybe before the little fingers touch. Hips on the heels. Now she's gonna come up the same way she went down, keeping the hips on the heels. Hold the core, inhale first as she comes up and arms down by your side. And that's a wonderful pose, once again in the Bikram and the Barkin world, half tortoise. So that's our episode for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. You wanna learn all about hot yoga, tutorials like this, flows, factoids, history. Hit the like button and the subscribe button right now. And we'll see you, you're waiting, in the next video. Bye, guys.